So we must all speak the truth. So affirm the truth. Yes, affirm life is full of possibilities. Yes, affirm all the truthful possibilities. But you don't need to try to trick yourself into saying something is okay when it isn't okay. Some people say every day in every way I'm getting better and better. And if that's not true, see, that, then that we call that delusion. If it's not true, if it is true, then it's wonderful. So just affirm the truth. The truth is I lack some skills to multiply my income by 10, which I wish to do in the future. Affirm that you don't have the skills so that it'll drive you to get the skills because you want to multiply your income by 10. Yes, it is true. All things are possible to the believer. We don't just need the truth. We need the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Here's what we don't need. Delusion. In order to try to make something out of nothing. All you need is this simple little formula to imagine. Because imagination is so powerful. It's the beginning of creating all things that we see. Then faith to believe it's possible. Without faith, nothing is possible. But now we deposit faith and imagination into muscle, into discipline. Michelangelo was a genius, but it wasn't his genius that created this famous sculpture. And it was the muscle and the chisel and the hammer that created the sculpture. But if you take your genius, if you take your ideas and your inspiration and your excitement and translate it into muscle, if you want good health, you can study every book there is, and you can believe that it's possible to be healthy. But until you fall on the floor and start doing the push-ups, until you jog around the block, working and laboring, labor pains, we call it, but why would an upcoming potential mother be willing to put herself through rather a painful experience of giving birth? Here's why. It creates new life. New life only comes from labor. Now, some people try to create it with affirmation, but it doesn't work. That's why we should devote most of our time to labor, because it's the miracle creator. It says six days labor and one day rest. Don't get those numbers mixed up. And here's why. It isn't rest that creates the miracle. It's labor that creates the miracle. Labor creates the miracle of a career. Labor creates the miracle of a fortune. You can have plenty of miracle. You don't need to engage in delusion. And here's what's real. Imagination, supported by faith, invested in labor, works miracles. The labor of my language produces the miracle of sight. Being able to see things you couldn't see before. Maybe it'll help you to see something today, tomorrow, that you've never seen before. The work, and lecturing is hard work. They say one hour of intense lecturing is like digging ditches for eight hours. Energy and the vitality it takes. Just become almost exhausted sometimes in laboring with words to get your vocabulary out there where it touches someone's consciousness so that they can see something they've never seen before. And we call that miracle stuff. I don't know how it works. You don't need to know how it works. But the labor takes the idea translate it into labor, and it starts producing all kinds of miracles. Now you can understand that you are a miracle worker. Would a miracle worker sleep late? I doubt it. Unique thing about genius, genius has no sense of time. To a genius, it's not late. <laughs> to the average person, it's getting late. But to a genius, it's not late. Say, well, Michelangelo, I'll meet you here in the morning and watch you get started. And you got to get there at 4 o'clock. You say, it's really early. And Michelangelo says, early? What's this early? It doesn't compute early. Because the genius is consumed by the finished product. And he devotes his imagination and his faith translated into muscle to produce the sculpture. Now, you can do that with your health. Health is just as valuable as the sculpture that inspires the world. Your own relationships creating success, making a fortune. It's all part of the same scheme of imagination, faith supported by labor. And now all things are possible to those that believe. Now here's the next part of the success formula, learning to handle the passing of time. You can't hurry the spring. It does its work in its time. You can't rush the summer. You can't shorten the winter. It's going to be however long it's going to be. You just must have patience with the unfolding of things. Just make the note, there's always a way. Guess what's more valuable than money and capital? Ingenuity. Figuring out a way. I'll find a way. I'll start with nothing and find a way to turn nothing into profit. 
But you don't need inventory. Here's the greatest inventory, the inventory of the mind, the inventory of the personality. That's the greatest capital. Money serves its purpose. But what's money without courage? What's money without determination? It's worthless. But ingenuity and courage and determination and charisma and personality, you've got so much to invest besides your money. Make sure the money is the smallest part of your investment. A little money and a whole lot of ingenuity, and you can turn all kinds of nothing into something. Now, the patience of learning to handle the passing of time. In our push-button society, it is tough. Two things really wreck your chances for the future, impatience and greed. Impatience as Americans, we, we just got to learn to have the patience. Somebody said in America, the shortest period of time is the time between when the light turns green and you hear the first horn. That's the shortest period of time. Impatience. Here's the other one that's a killer, and that's greed. Greed is evil. It must be dealt with, lest some be tempted by greed. Here's what greed hopes for, something for nothing. Here's what greed hopes for, more than its share. You say, well, then how can you truly grow and make a fortune? It's very easy. Legitimate ambition. And your ambition now can make you a fortune. You don't need greed to make a fortune. Here's what legitimate ambition wishes for, something at the service of others. Legitimate ambition hopes to rise by helping others to rise. But learning to handle the passing of time Patience. Now, here's one more step to success, the solving of problems. Business problems, family problems, financial problems, emotional problems, we've all got these unique challenges. But when it comes to problems, I found a good way to go after a problem. It's the old, you know, draw a line down the center of the page and state the problem over here. Sometimes you've got to take some things out of your head and put it on paper. It's to state the problem, put it on paper. Said, I got this to deal with, I got this, I got this to deal with. Let's put it all out here. Because to come up here with the answers and solutions, we need to know really what the problem really is. You don't have to live in it, you don't have to dwell in it, but you do have to know it. Because you can't up, come up with good answers unless you know the whole problem. What is the real problem? Now we come up with the answers. Now, there's three major questions to ask to solve most any problem. Number one, what could I do? And it's good to get in the habit of seeing if you can come up with answers on your own. And then just do a little what we call develop some working papers. I could do number one, number two, or number three. What could I do? Then if that doesn't do it, next is what could I read? Right? Is there a book on this problem? Maybe someone else has wrestled with it and found a solution. Maybe I could check out the book. Also, you might read your old journals. Maybe something you've recorded some time back has got an answer that you've skipped over and you go do a little research. And sure enough, it's in your own journals. Now, if this doesn't work and this doesn't work, now you go to number three, who could I ask? But don't go to number three now till you've really worked hard on number one and number two. You need the mental processes stirred. You need to learn the skill of solving problems to the best of your ability by yourself. But if, if that doesn't work now, don't hesitate to ask. But don't ask first. See if you can solve it first. And you come to somebody and say, look, I've done this, I've researched this, and I still haven't got the answer. Could you help me? You can't believe how much quick, easy help you will get if it's evident that you have tried your best to help yourself. So ask, but don't ask first. My daughter, Linda, learned this. She used to travel a lot before she got married. She'd come to me and say, Daddy, I've put together a $1,000, but I'm going to Thailand. I said, wonderful. She said, hey, you know, the kids wanted to go there, and I didn't go, and they wanted to buy this and buy that, and I didn't buy it, and I've saved up my money. She said, I got $1,000 to make this trip. I said, wonderful, Linda. She said, now, to really make the trip, I only need a couple of thousand more. She knew that other 2000 would be easy if she put the first 1000 together. But if she would have come and said, you know, how about $3,000 for a trip? See, that doesn't work. It doesn't unlock the vaults. So don't hesitate to ask. Don't hesitate to ask, but try to solve it yourself.